Hey everybody, welcome to Chew Stream. Today we have, as always, we have the wonderful Masei Seki from Imaginism Studios joining me. Hey guys, how's it going? So, big happy New Year's to yes, everybody out there. happy New Year's. Did you have a good New Year's? I did. Actually, I was pretty busy with um, lots of painting, but overall it was, it was a really good holiday. Right on. Mine was a painting holiday as well, as you know, because we were probably painting together the whole entire holidays. Yep. <laughs> uh, but you know what? It's kind of like going through the grind, going through like, you know, working hard and then finishing it all, putting it up there on the walls for everybody to see. It makes it so much more worth it, right? Yeah. And it's super, super satisfying makes you feel like you're doing something yeah. with, your, with your life. <laughs> it's like all those all those times like all those nights I've been painting I actually made something we all want to have a comfortable life we all want to have that life that's just like above average but the true road to comfort is usually and ironically from taking on many challenges first, many obstacles, many hardships first before we get to that, you know, that road to comfort. It's kind of like Shawshank Redemption. I had to crawl through a big tunnel of crap to get to his freedom. And uh, we definitely went through a big tunnel of crap, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. But it wasn't that bad. After a while, you smell the aroma and you're like, hmm, it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I could live with it. Cool. So um, why don't we start off with a bunch of questions that we had from uh, last time. Sure thing. Let me just pull that up. Yeah, and as uh, Masei is digging that up, I just want to mention Seattle Workshop. It's happening March 2nd and 3rd. Andrea Blasich, Chris Sasaki... Uh, Ryan Lang, Jesper Ising, Victoria Ying, and Jeff Turley will all be there in Seattle. And they'll be at the uh, Emerald City Comic Con because we're tagging, we're tag teaming with them. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Those guys, holy smokes. That's, that's a lineup. That's an awesome lineup. Totally. Oh Andrea Blasich with his sculptures, Chris Sasaki, you know, Pixar character designer, um, Ryan Lang, Marvel, Disney, Jesper Ising, you got uh, Magic the Gathering, Fantastical Fantasy Illustrations, Victoria Ying, uh, formerly of Disney, formerly of um, Sony, mm -hmm. and now she's caught the freelance bug and she's also teaching at art center and jeff turley holy smokes you know disney big time and uh now also well i don't even know if i should if i'm supposed to say what he's doing now i don't know so i'm not <laughs> going to okay so um yeah let's go on to the questions from last week yeah um so last time uh we have a few questions michael ale asked uh Bobby, what are some things you really focused on practicing when you first started being serious about art? What was your daily routine? This is a nice question. When I first started practicing, you know, that's definitely not the one to follow because when I first was um, doing art, it was just like nonstop, no breaks, just full steam ahead, kind of just going sprinting without stopping for years. and and definitely suffered huge consequences because of that you know arm problems back problems for like five six years anyways going past that to nowadays um, my schedule okay so my schedule now is I wake up 4 30 5 o'clock something like that and then I will do um, stretches exercises meditation Wim Hof method mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and really, that's a really wonderful way to start off the day because you're making your body stronger, you're making it more durable and all that stuff ready to, you know, get on the grind for the rest of the day. Um, then I get into work and nobody's in work yet, so that's awesome. And, uh, you know, I just 
start doing the things that need the most concentration, the most brain power, um, whatever that is for you. And then it's elaborate. It's elaborate, but I don't know. If you really want to know, um, I also have my daily calendar, right? So I'll take everything from my to-do list at night and I'll see where do I want to block in times, you know, big time chunks for for the different things on my to-do list. That's when I have a ton of things on my to-do list and none of them can be kind of put to the side. None of them can be forgotten. That's the best way is just doing little time chunks and uh, little reminders will pop up on my phone and I'll stop what I'm doing there, change to this thing and as long as I'm thinking about it, you know, planning it out the night before, then I don't have to worry if I'm missing anything. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're doing this right, that's one of the big kind of worries that, that I have. If I didn't plan things out, I'm, I'm spending a bunch of time on something, I start to worry, am I missing anything? Mm -hmm. You know, did I get to everything that I need to do? Mm -hmm. If you have a lot to do. Uh, pretty much these days uh the last like month two months i don't know we've been working to around 9 9 p.m yeah you know so if i get in you know 6 30 7 o'clock to 9 p.m holy smokes that's 14 and a half hours <laughs> but you know what when you love something that's that's okay. You know, yeah. you really have fun doing it. And when you have great people to work with, to keep you company, even though we aren't even, you know, we're in separate rooms. Yeah. We're not even talking to each other for like hours. Yeah. It's great. It's so great. You know, that's to be very general. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of like good guy time. <laughs> like when guys go fishing and they just sit there and they don't say shit to each other for like four hours and then they come home and then you know it's like oh how's your day oh it's awesome <laughs> so good spent so much you know time with my buddy and whatever and what you guys talk about nothing you know it's the company yeah it's the company. So, <laughs> I know you know obviously uh, this doesn't just pertain to guys, but it's kind of like stereotypical uh -huh. <laughs> of like guy time. Okay. I think it's like when you're sharing that moment together, even though you're like, do you're not doing it together. It's, I guess it's just that connection. Yeah. It's like you're working hard and so I'm going to work hard. You know what is also kind of like an equivalent that maybe more people can relate to is when you're all sitting in a room playing DS. You know, um, not talking to each other or yeah. all sitting in a room and you're look you know everybody's on their phones but it's just nice knowing that somebody else is in the room yeah yeah totally <laughs> okay um i guess we can move on to our next question um by ann mayfair uh hi bobby Masse. thank you so much for these streams my question is how do you find your absolute strength to showcase in art for example ve vehicle design creature design textures um I think the first step is always to find your passion, right? Because your passion is that extra thing that will bring you above and beyond uh, what you would usually get to doing anything else. You know, that passion that you have for the, the work is what will get you up in the morning and, you know, leave late at night and you're fine with it and you're, you're happy with it, you know? So find your passion first because I kind of believe that everybody can get to a very high level of art as long as they're passionate about something and they put in the time, put in the effort. But if you don't have passion, it won't last long. Mm -hmm. It's one of those, I feel like it's one of those things where you don't need anyone to tell you to do it. You kind of just do it for the sake of you know you just want to do it exactly yeah. exactly you know like did you start drawing because you thought it would be a great financial uh decision no because you <laughs> like the smell of crayons and you like just you know sitting on the carpet and drawing your drawings yeah <laughs> okay so the next question is by ian 
uh, Gillespie. Um, I work as a 3D generalist in video games, but have been working in my spare time towards becoming a concept artist. How would you suggest I go about transferring from one specialty to another? I. Uh, you know, this is something that you want to make a transition doing, right? So. I always kind of uh, warn people that if you are going from one way of life to another way of life, it's important to make that transition before you drop that first thing. You know, when I was in school, I, I'm actually going to make a video out of this, but when I was in school, I thought, okay, I'm just going to concentrate on school. That way I will bring out my artistic potential by the time I graduate school. This meant don't, um, don't bother going to workshops, don't bother trying to reach out to studios, don't bother trying to do anything outside of that school uh, bubble. You know, and it really became this bubble. I didn't know anything else that was happening outside. And then when I became a professional, I had a very hard time in the beginning. You know, it's because I didn't make a transition. So if you're going from one thing to, you know, modeling or whatever, start making that transition already before you let go of that first thing that's, you know, paying for the bills and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's, I guess it's all about, like, thinking of the plan as well. Yeah, yeah. And of course, there's always many ways to do things. You definitely, I've definitely heard about um, stories of dropping everything and living out of your van by the lake and, mm. you know, trying to do your thing. I guess when you're, if you're able to do that, like where you don't have like certain responsibilities that you need to like, you know, watch over or like take care of. For me, I feel like I kind of did that where I was in university and I was like, oh, animation, I want to do that. And so I dropped every, like I dropped out of school and then um, yeah, I, well, it's not like too extreme, but I knew that I wasn't, you know, I didn't have responsibilities where like my life depended on like staying in that school or like, you know, a, a job or something. So very, very true. So, it kind of depends on how many responsibilities you yeah. have, right? Yeah. So if you do have responsibilities, then make that transition. Mm -hmm. If you don't have responsibilities at all, then just jump right in. <laughs> <laughs> if you're okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next question is by Jordan Long. Um, what's the best way to start getting your work out there and into public eyes? Yes. Uh, before, before I answer that, I don't know if anybody actually knows who I'm painting right now, but, uh, you know, first person that realizes who I'm painting, uh, I'll give you a big shout out if you say <laughs> it in the chat. Okay, so... Um, what was that question again? Sorry, I just um, blanked out for a sec. <laughs> What's the best way to uh, oh, start to getting get your, your art? Yes, get your art out there. You know, a lot of people ask that. What What's the best way? Do you go to conventions? Do you go to workshops? Do you go and post on, you know, DeviantArt, ArtStation, Instagram, whatever? Best way is all at once. Right on. And, and it's... Uh, Lail. Lail Ann. Ooh. Big shout out to Lil Ann. Uh, Somebody said Trump. Trump. Clinton. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, oh that no. isn't even close. <laughs> okay. Oh, Bill Clinton. I was thinking Hillary Clinton. I was like, wow, you guys are mean. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Lil Ann, big shout out to you. Right on. Yeah, do everything at once. Do everything at mm -hmm. once because you're trying to create fire. You're trying to ignite something you know you don't create fire by rubbing two sticks together slowly you get you give it everything that you have not that i you know i'm not an expert in building fires but i'm assuming that you got to give it everything that you have and you got to go fast you got to go with intensity you got to do everything all at once and the more you do everything all at once in a condensed burst of you know productivity uh that's when stuff happens. That's when the most happens. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's also important to keep that consistency of like how much you're posting or 
how often. Yeah, you know. I think that's a good thing of, to consider as well. Totally. And then as you get more, uh, you know, quote unquote successful, then more and more things take up your time and more and more things that you can't show anymore yeah. because it's all confidential and all this stuff. So it definitely gets harder, mm-hmm. right? And uh, in the beginning, it's all, it's far more important though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As you start to get busier, then uh, you'll be able to talk about bigger things, which you won't need to consistently do as much because they're bigger mm. kind of news. Mm-hmm. And you have the... A lot of times, you know, if you're doing this for something like Disney or whatever, then you have them promoting you as well by talking about the project and talking about, hopefully talking about what you did on it or, Mm. uh, you know, in the credits. Yeah. Okay. um, So moving on to today's questions. uh, Marie Vanille asks... uh, in Imaginism, do you have subtitles classes or schoolism? Do you have subtitle classes? I have a friend that's interested, but she doesn't speak English. And I think she said um, her friend speaks Spanish. Uh, uh, definitely, definitely on the radar. Um, mm-hmm. Right now, right now we're just not on it yet, but uh, I can guarantee you it will come sooner or later. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next question is by Sophia. Do you, have an, uh, do you have an advice to learn to teach art? Do you know a book that talks about that? Hmm, that's a really good question. Mm-hmm. A, a book about teaching. Um, oh, you know what's a fantastic book that I'm so obsessed about and I, I read over and over again is The Art of Learning by Josh Waitzkin. Oh, that's, yeah. that's a really good book. That is yeah. uh, that's a really good book because it doesn't just talk about the art of teaching or learning actually the art of learning it it talks about the art of learning at the highest level you know Josh Waitzkin he was a chess he's a chess master that also became a Wen Chun master um, and various other high-level skills this guy has this guy's developed and so it's not about learning how to uh, you know, play chess really well. It's about learning how to do things really well, learning how to learn things to the utmost, you know, the highest level. Mm-hmm. It's a really good book, The Art of Learning. I also think um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective mm-hmm. People. I feel like... Um, if you're a good person, you're like people will be attracted to you. I don't know. That's that's what I feel like. I think that once you kind of have this certain personality and like this perspective on life, it's like you're more likely to draw people to you and they want to know like how can you be like this even though like for example, if something really bad happened to you but you look at it in a positive way, people are like how do you do that? Like and they want to learn from you. Yeah. That's a really that's that's a wonderful book. One of my absolute favorites. It just makes you want to not only be effective in everything that you do, not just work, but in your friendships and relationships and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it just it makes you want to be a good person. So mm-hmm. I love that book. Really yeah. great uh, suggestion there. I'm listening to it again. So just a you know shout out to that book. <laughs> yeah, Audible. There you go. And then you could keep painting and drawing. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is by Leonardo. Um, Bobby, you mentioned a while ago about Evan Amundsen is going to be at Schoolism. Is there any time scheduled already for him to start? Oh, well, um, he's been doing workshops. He's been doing live workshops with Schoolism. Uh, I would love to have him do an online class. Uh, Great idea. (laughs) (laughs) That would be really awesome. Okay, uh, next question by Yad Art. Um, Would you share with us the major turning point in your journey as an artist? I think it would be inspiring to many of us who are currently struggling in art. Mm. Well, you know what? We've been around for over 10 years now, so there's many turning points, right? Um, First one, first smallest one was winning winning the uh, sketchbook 
Pro Contest. Way, way back in the day, there's this, you know, program called Sketchbook, uh, formerly known as Sketchbook Pro. And uh, way back in the day, it was originally made by Alias Wavefront, and they were having a contest, um, you know, paint a painting, whatever, and then they'll pick a winner, and then the winner will win this brand new Wacom Cintiq monitor with an Acer uh, laptop that you can also draw on. Wow. And back then, a Cintiq, this was for the 18 inch Cintiq. And if you're wondering, 18 inch, what? <laughs> you mean like 17 or 19? I'm uh, No, 18 inch cost about $5,000 back then. And, uh, and I won it, you know, I, somehow I won it and it was awesome and then I that really helped my career because it gave me this equipment that I couldn't afford mm -hmm. you know and then of course uh, then there was also winning a couple of awards and then the Tim Burton thing that was huge you know working on Alice in Wonderland especially because there was only three character designers on it it was Kay and I and Michael Kutche, uh fantastic uh, artist and so because there's only the three of us and because Alice in Wonderland the first one did so well you know in the box office that had a huge effect on our career and then of course last year um, our show Nico and the Sword of Light won the Emmy for uh, children's animated programming for 2016 so that was huge as well in, in another way where people mm -hmm. are a lot more interested in our ideas now you know for other stories and things like that so there's there's been many and actually a lot of times you know you have these people that that hit their so-called big break but if you ask them they don't see it like that at all it was a lot of stuff happening under the surface before that big break even happened mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a lot of little successes Okay, um, sorry. Then, okay, so the next question is by Andre. Uh, you mentioned in your video about focus on portfolios. How do you really choose what to show? Like, if I'm both good in drawing monsters and cute animals, for example. Pick one. I, you know, it's just like, if we all had that Forrest Gump attention we would be able to accomplish anything because that person just picks something and then just you know keeps going on it mm -hmm. ping pong or whatever and then all of a sudden he's a master at ping pong mm -hmm. that's half the battle there is your attention you know being able to just keep it on the right thing put those blinders on and just do it you know so how would i do things if I had full control, super willpower. I would just say, okay, cute things or uh, what's the other one? Creatures or something? Yeah. Or pick, drawing monsters. Yeah, drawing monsters. So then I would just be like, okay, I'm just going to pick one. Drawing monsters. I'm going to dedicate this year, 2017, to getting to as high of my potential as I can drawing monsters. I guarantee you it will not be a waste of your time. And then 2018, if you want, you switch to drawing cute things. Mm -hmm. And you just delve into it. You know, it's much easier than trying to do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so the next question is by Andre. Um, I'm in an animation studio, but do corporate stuff and not evolving my art. I have the opportunity to storyboard... F uh... I have the opportunity to storyboard for ads uh, as a freelance th three days a week and work two day uh, two days on my portfolio. Is it a smart move? I think it's a pretty smart move. Well, you know, it seems like you want to do storyboarding. I'm not too sure, but if you don't want to do storyboarding and your job is paying the bills and you're good with that uh, and you want to do something else then I would do the job and then I would do the something else and I would actively look for a class look for a workshop or whatever 
because that's the ultimate fast forward. Like for example, I want to learn more about copywriting. You know, just writing copy. Uh, I signed up for a class, thousand、mm. bucks. You know, it's a lot of money, but is it worth it? Yeah, it's totally worth it because not only、um, are you getting the good information, you're getting it in almost like an abridged version of their you know twenty years of experience. They're they're whittling it down into the most most important stuff. You're learning at a very high rate, and then you you stop wasting your time、mm-hmm. as much. You know.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. The next questions by Amanda. Uh, hi, Ms. Saint Bobby.、Uh, in both of your work, is there a certain story, message, or theme you want to tell? As visual artists, we usually have a personal outlook or a depiction of the world. Thanks. Hmm. Yeah. You go first. Me? Uh, I try to. I mean, that's what I feel like. In art, you just want to tell a story. I mean, I feel like that's why a lot of people draw art, or in even any、hopefully, type of yeah, yeah hopefully, <laughs> or any type of art. Um, I mean that's what people are attracted to, like stories, and they and if it's something that they relate to, that's even like better. Right on.、Um, I do the exact same. You know, I paint a lot of creatures, and sometimes it's just for fun. Like this one is, you know, just for fun.、Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't really mean anything or anything like that. But if you look at pretty much all of my creature work.、Um, I'm always thinking about a story behind it, and a lot of times it's a reflection on things that I've experienced in life, or things that I've noticed in life. You know, so for example,、um, for example, there's this there's this painting I did. It's called the Big Bad Bunny Eater, and there's these bunnies, and they're all getting attracted to this big creature that is obviously very Uh, it's a predator, but its camouflage has this bunny on its face, right? A pattern of a bunny on its face, so it's attracting the cute little bunnies. And to me, that was more just like thinking about you know some people in life that appear to be such and such, but then they're total monsters, like you know Bill Cosby, for example. <laughs> I still can't get over. The fact that that he did such horrific things,、um, mm-hmm. yeah, he was one of my heroes. He was he was <laughs> my you know bunny,、yeah. you know, <laughs> when I was a child. Yeah, <sighs> what can well, you do? Yeah.、Um, okay, so the next question by、uh, KJP:、uh, What do you guys do when you're chilling? Like TV shows, video games, books. I guess. More like, what do we do on our free time? What do you do? You climb rocks. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I do climb rocks. I like to go bouldering on my free time, especially after work, after like a long day of sitting. That's such a good one, because not only are you getting exercise, but you're relaxing kind of at the same、yeah. time that you're like, you know, really. Yeah, yeah. That's great. And I get to hang out with friends. What do I like to do? I like to hang out with Kay and just. Do whatever she wants to do, and just <laughs> I like to follow her around.、Mm-hmm. Um, TV and, shows, yeah, TV shows.、Uh, you know, I I only like a certain amount of TV shows. I don't、yeah. like to get into too many.、Mm-hmm. Um, but I really love doing this thing called Wim Hof, the Wim Hof method. It's this other thing that I've been learning for like a bit over a year. Uh, meditation,、mm. yoga, breathing exercises—it's really awesome.、Mm-hmm. I love it.、Mm-hmm. Cold showers. <laughs> I know that's what turns everybody off is when I mention the cold showers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>、um, actually, I just finished、um, Westworld yesterday. Oh, oh yeah. So good. Okay, no, no spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers but, but yeah, that was the show I was totally into as well. Definitely、mm-hmm. check that、yeah. out if you haven't already, guys. <laughs> okay, so the next question is by Progress.、Uh, do you have any tips on how to approach other artists at conventions? I had a booth at my last one, but I was too shy to talk to the other ones, so I just stood there, afraid. Oh, I totally know that feeling. Really? Yeah. 
it's like you want to talk to all these other artists especially the the artists that you like admire but you kind of don't really know what mm. to say it's been a while for me but i i do remember going through that i i don't remember actually going through that but i i remember the fact that i went through that mm. if that makes mm-hmm. sense because it was you know 10 years ago or something like that and i definitely remember thinking to myself i'm afraid to go up to this person i'm nervous but we are going up there anyways and just telling your feet we're doing this Mm -hmm. you know like you ever um jump off a cliff into some water kind of thing like you know a small cliff maybe like 15 (laughs) feet or something like that yeah uh you're nervous you know well i am i look down and i'm nervous and then you just kind of got to tell your brain shut up brain we're doing this and then you jump (laughs) same thing you know just walk up to them and that's like the equivalent of jump in and then you just Mm -hmm. talk to them say whatever Mm -hmm. now what can they say what do you usually say do do you have a thing (laughs) um well when i had my i had a booth at a convention as well i think the most the easiest question is oh how's your how's your day going like I also have a booth too like and then you just kind of talk about the day and then obviously talk about their artwork and then maybe also talk about like or ask them like what do they do or or I don't know yeah yeah and let me let me give the the audience something to kind of think about okay so you go up to somebody and you say uh Hey, how's your day going? And all that good stuff, the intro stuff that Masse was just talking about. And then you could just say, hey, I noticed that you were doing blank, you know, whatever project, or I noticed that you posted something about this, or I noticed you did this already. And then you say, how many blank did it take to do blank? Mm. And then, you know, how many people did it take to do this scene? Or how many hours did it take to paint this painting? And then when they they answer, you react to that answer. Mm. Oh, wow, you know, that's exactly blank as I thought or whatever. Or, oh, wow, I thought it would be blank, 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 you know, (laughs) and fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. I I think that's, I don't do things so cookie cutter, but Mm. to help you guys, you know, to help those out that are looking for that kind of uh, intro. Mm Mm-hmm it works yeah and usually most artists are like they want to talk to other artists as well and usually they're like really welcoming and warm yeah and look at their faces you know (laughs) see if they are getting it or if they're not interested because then you got to change directions Mm, mm -hmm. right like try not to talk about yourself as much talk about them a lot more and hopefully the best scenario is when you throw a little nugget out there and then they they kind of toss it back okay Mm. so like you're talking you're talking oh yeah you know like i love what you did on that film and this film and you know um kind of reminds me of a film i worked on so how do you do this and this and this and then hopefully they go so what what was that film Mm, you know or i just say something that doesn't give all the answers Mm-hmm. You know, when when I meet somebody and they introduce themselves and they give me the whole spiel. Hi, how's it going? What's your name? Oh, okay, your name's Jack. What do you do, Jack? Well, first, you know, in the beginning of my life, I did this <laughs> and this, and then I went on to here, and the, you know, ten year plan uh, in the future and all this stuff. And it's like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> you know, it's like, what else am I supposed yeah, to say, really? You're gonna run out of questions. For yeah. That person. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So the next question is by Vanessa. Um, I've been trying to learn to paint landscape, but I'm just not improving at all. Any tips on how to study for landscape? Love you guys. The the best way is you know of course painting landscapes outside, um, painting real landscapes, and when you're doing that general high level kind of uh, procedure right when you're starting to paint you aren't trying to paint details yet you're trying to paint the essence of something so does it feel like a bunch of trees even though it's a big blotch of you know paint Mm -hmm. where you're not trying to detail leaves out 
Does it feel like the tree that you want? Does it feel like the buildings that you want, the lighting that you want? And then you slowly get more detail. Mm -hmm. You know, you break up the big details that you put down, the big uh, statements that you put down, that big blotch that represents a bunch of trees, and you cut into it with another color, another tone, and you start bringing in more details, adding more information. And in a general way, you tend to go from a big brush in the beginning to a smaller brush. But if you want a recommendation of a really great class to check out, I would check out uh, Landscape Sketching with Nathan Fowkes. You know, uh, he uses watercolor and gouache. It's fantastic. And uh, if you get the subscription, it's $15 a month on Schoolism. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember Brandon? Mm -hmm. Gully, uh, yeah. he's been posting a lot of his uh, landscape paintings, and he's improved a lot. Like because oh, yeah. he took his uh, Nathan's critique class. He's he's improved so much. Like that's totally a person that put the blinders on and is just like focused, focused on yeah. learning and taking the shortest possible route that you can, which mm -hmm. is learning from somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, you can learn by yourself. It'll just take you a lot longer. You know, it's much easier for somebody else to think about something for 20 years and then tell you how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the next question is by Denise. Uh, what, habits, uh, sorry, what habits do you have to help you keep consistent with posting and advice in social media and balancing to where one is not in social media all the time? Put a timer on, you know, that's the easiest way just I'll have a little time slot of 20 minutes mm -hmm. 20 minutes that's all I get boom when you know that you're you're not sipping your coffee and looking at a bunch of comments for like 20 minutes before you answer you're going boom 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 going through all of them as quick as possible that's what I do you know mm -hmm. and that's that's worked mm. okay um the next question is by Sam. Uh, I study animation production at university. I want to be an animator in CG, but I love character design. In this age, you have to be awesome at one thing to have a chance. How do I manage this? So you want to be... What does he want to do, though? Like, it seems like character design mm -hmm. and animation. Yeah. I, I don't know. I would pick one. I, I would probably pick animation. Yeah. You know, that's what I would do first. If you're interested in both, I would pick animation because animation will, it, you can definitely still practice your character design because you, as you're animating, you'll see what kind of design will be better animatable. Mm -hmm. Not like I'm a huge animation expert or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not, but I've studied it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done my little animations. I've done my little short films and stuff. And that's what I found. Yeah, I think, and then you, when you animate, you understand the form a lot better. Yeah. Like, whether it's 2D or 3D, and then you can push the poses, and I think that's what really makes your your drawings a lot, you know, stronger and more appealing. Yeah, a big part about anim uh, character design that not a lot of people think about is that it isn't just designing the clothes and what this character will mm -hmm. look like. It's designing really the personality of the character as well, the the essence of the character. So you can't do that with stiff poses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So studying animation will help you to, um, you know, gain your chops with uh, expressive poses. Yeah. And there's actually a lot of artists out there who are working in, you know, in the industry who were started off as uh, animators and then eventually became character designers. Yeah. Like Bobby Pontilla. Exactly, he, or storyboard great. artist yeah, storyboard or whatever. Artist, yeah. It's a great way to uh, learn mm -hmm. a bit about everything, I think, in in animation. Mm -hmm. Except for maybe maybe lighting. I don't know. Yeah. But then even still, you would want to know where you, the lights are going to be and you know make sure that you're getting the right light for your character mm -hmm. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next question is by... Raquel, 
Uh, hi, Bobby. I'm from Mexico. Could you explain or give an example of what you mean by deconstructing an image you are copying? Yes. So, for example, this image here, uh, looking at this image, if I want to deconstruct it, I would think about, well, what are the most important parts in this image? What were the the first marks that were used to paint this image, why were they there? Why were they chosen? You can see some faint, faint marks towards the back of the head that are very much straight, right? Because I'm not trying to get the absolute curvature of the back of the head there, but instead I'm putting down a simplified description of the the head, right? By just making a nice straight line and almost I almost made like a box and that box would be the most appropriate box for that size of head and so for me I'm, I'm always starting off with very simple kind of descriptions of things and then delving into it further and further and breaking it up and you know creating little details and kind of like the stuff I was just saying earlier mm -hmm. But yeah, you want to get into the head of the artist. That's what I mean by breaking up uh, something that you're looking at. You know, really trying to not just look on the surface level, but really delving into thinking about what were their first marks? Why, why did they do those marks? Things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the next question is by Aaron Howard. Um, I'm interested in concept character design. However, I seem to find more work in 3D character modeling than concept character design. In the hopes of getting in the in, into the industry, would I be typically more likely to get in if I drop my passion for now to learn a more practical but similar job? The more you can concentrate on one thing at a time, the, the faster you'll learn that thing and the faster you'll be able to move on to other things. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the next question is by Apostolos. Hey guys, uh, can you expand a bit more on s the schools and workshop, how it works? Do Does someone need to book? Uh, any further details would be major help. Stay creative, thanks. Well, schools and workshops, so you can, you can first you want to you know, go to schoolism.com and you want to click on workshops and then select the the city, the workshop that you want to get tickets for, and then there you can see all the instructors and you could buy your tickets. Um, after you do that, then I would prepare a portfolio. You know, a lot of times people bring them on iPads, that's really comfortable and very convenient to show. And bring some business cards as well, because who knows who you're going to meet. You know, there's mm -hmm. always. You're, you're going to be surrounded by people that also, um, you know, do art, but actually spend time, money, and effort to learn even more, you know, and that's really great because those are the people that you want to kind of surround yourself with, you know, people like yourself that uh, are not just doing art as a job, you know, they are on a mission to get good. They are on that path of, of an artist to really get to their potential. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would also, if you want, you can bring some stuff to give away, but I think a card is perfectly fine. You know, have an yeah. image on that business card. Um, and then I would do some studying on the people that are presenting so that you yeah. have some conversation conversational points mm -hmm. that you can ask them about or, or talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and you come up with like, you know, really good, well, you should try to come up with like questions that like n people who, like online, peop like if they ask a question, the artist might be too busy to ask or like they might not want to ask, but if it's in person, you're, they're more likely to answer questions that you can't normally ask. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's pretty much um, there's pretty much room for everybody to ask whatever questions they want to ask. Uh, there's always time allotted for that, mm -hmm. and overall, it's always been quite 
you know, effective for everybody to get their questions mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so the next question is uh, by Errol. Any tips on building portfolio to be able to work on movies as an environmental concept artist? Um, I would pick a story, you know, especially when you don't have any projects under your belt, it's very difficult because it's kind of like you need to have worked on a project, a big project to get on a big project, Mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like this catch 22. So start working on your own project, your own uh, movie or whatever, you know, what would Avatar 2 be? You know, maybe you know already. I don't know. But if you don't, just imagine it and start painting it. Start painting it. Start painting different locations, right? When somebody looks at your portfolio and it's not just a whole bunch of paintings that are one-off, like space environment, woods environment, you know, uh, ancient Aztec environment or whatever. Those are Those can be very effective as well. But when you see it relating to each other, you know, so maybe you have a portfolio of 20 different images and in those 20 different images, there's three stories. You know, there's the Aztec story, there's the woods story, and then there's the space story. And within those stories, there's like seven layouts each, Mm -hmm. you know, various uh, locations that that story might need. Yeah. Yeah, that shows... Like that looks like a professional portfolio now, mm-hmm. and it shows um, that you're able to create a world where they, like, it's like, it's from the same world. When you see those seven images, you're like, oh yeah, that totally works together. But if you do something completely different, like all over the place, then people might wonder if you're able to come up with stuff that you know that works for that project specifically. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, same thing with like animation right I hear it all the time like uh, a movie is not just full of amazing action chase scenes Mm -hmm. you know put in some acting in -hmm. your animation portfolio the subtler things the conversations uh, same kind of thing yeah it's the subtle things that are invisible to the viewer's eyes which makes it good right that's that's what I think. It's like the subtle things. Hmm. It's like seamless. They kind of yeah. They kind of just yeah. mix right in. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the next question is by Errol. Um, any oh sorry, we already went through that question. Uh oh, another question by Errol. Um, is there any plans on twenty eighteen to hold a schoolism live in Singapore, or maybe the Southeast Asia? I totally come. Hmm. Not too sure yet. Uh, we're right now we're finalizing um, our 2017 lineup Mm -hmm. we haven't really thought about 2018 just yet but I I would hope so I would love I would love to go back to Singapore get some of that spicy crab (laughs) see a bunch of good friends and good people Mm -hmm. yeah I heard Singapore is really nice it's wonderful uh and I, I travel through my stomach. And so I'm just saying, <laughs> like, it's wonderful because I just think about the food. <laughs> but I remember the place is quite wonderful as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so <clears throat> the next question is by Sam. Um, will you be introducing animation to a schoolism class? If not, is there an online site you would recommend to learn a high standard of animation? Animation Mentor. Mm-hmm. That one's easy. You mm-hmm. know, you're dealing with people that actually work on big projects you're dealing with a ceo that you know animated at pixar animation working on finding nemo working on uh toy story 2 monsters inc all these amazing movies that is the best kinds of teachers the ones that actually reach their ultimate artistic goals and not like reach their um you know, lowered mm-hmm. goals, or you, maybe not reaching their goals. <laughs> you did a a recent interview with Bobby. Yes, Pike, right? yes, 
and uh, it just went up on the Chew Stream podcast. Yeah. So if you are, if you have a phone, iTunes, Android, you can get the Chew Stream podcast. And I'm going to be updating that podcast every single day for the next few months. You know, with classic and new interviews, chew streams, uh, little plant people videos, you know, audio, whatever, daily. Mm -hmm. If you're on an Android, you want to download the podcast. What's it called? Um, It's called the... Podcast Republic app. Okay, if you're on an Android and if you're on an iPhone, you just go to iTunes. People have been asking for a podcast of all these, uh, all this content that I've been making over the years. It takes a little time to, you know, turn the ship around, but we've turned it and uh, podcasts are up. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, and if you can leave a rating, leave a comment. That would be wonderful because I just realized, you know, ChewStream, it doesn't say art in there anyway, anywhere. It doesn't say illustration or animation or whatever. Nobody's going to find these things. Mm-hmm. Nobody is going <laughs> to find the ChewStream on these podcasts unless I get a bunch of reviews and stuff. Yeah, that'd be super helpful. Um, okay, so the next question is... Um, oh yeah, and the podcasts are really nice to like listen to while you do your art too. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's totally what they're meant for. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I like to listen to stuff uh, when I paint and draw. So yeah. hopefully others will find it helpful. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the next question is by Noldi. Um, I've been practicing values with techniques you showed in your past video. I get in the ballpark problem is they seem come out uh, they seem to come out patchy like the brush strokes how can i get to how can i get it to come out like this like how it is in the video oh take my class i guess (laughs) um so the brush strokes come out patchy right so yeah best way is to honestly to take the class because i go through every little detail uh, I go through every little bit behind how I use my brush strokes. Um, but let me just try to explain it here. So if you want to blend things in, you know, you can do a few different options or combinations of the different options. So one is you can lower your flow. Okay, that's the rate at which the paint comes out of your brush. You can lower your opacity. That's how see through your brushes or your color is, your paint is, excuse me. If both of those things aren't working, then change your color to some color that's closer to the color that you're painting on top of. And then they'll blend together a lot easier. You know, or you can do just one of those things if you do it properly um, or a combination. But if you can't, for the life of you blend stuff in lower your opacity lower your flow and pick a color that is much closer to the color that you're painting on top of Mm -hmm. yeah i took your class so it was super helpful (laughs) actually i paint the way you kind of paint now but it it is like super helpful just like being well because you explain step by step like how to do it and what to do in order to get that look so yeah it's really recommended Thanks, Shout Pase. outs to you. <laughs> right on, right on. <laughs> okay, so the next question is by Katie Jackson. Uh, when are tickets going on sale for London and who is coming to the oh, workshop? Okay, sorry. Right That's... on. Hey, Katie. Great to see some regulars on mm-hmm. the stream. Um, London is going to be fantastic. So let's pull up the thing here. So first, uh, London tickets... I anticipate that they will go on sale this month, January. Okay, make sure that you're on the Schoolism newsletter. If you aren't, go to schoolism.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom, click on news, tips, and freebies, 
and then sign up for the newsletter. The great thing about the newsletter is that every newsletter that we put out, there's always free educational stuff in the newsletter for artists. Okay, so London Workshop is going to be with David Levy, uh, live action concept artist, extraordinaire. He's doing animation right now, uh, animated movies right now, which is very cool, very versatile, one of the fastest painters I know. So that's David Levy. Then we have Evan, Evan and Munson. We were Just talking that. about that earlier. Absolute phenom. This guy, this young man is just a beast, a crazy beast. Mm -hmm. uh, took my class a bunch <laughs> of years ago, surpassed me many moons ago as well, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, real, real hardcore. Then we have Jesper Ising, uh, you know, Magic the Gathering, uh, Fantasy Illustrations, D&D, &D, amazing. He does a killer, killer uh, demo. And then we also have Ryan Lang. Mm. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan Lang, you know, Doctor Strange, Avengers, I believe. Yeah, Avengers, a bunch of Marvel movies, a bunch of uh, Disney movies. Moana, uh, Big Hero 6, another beast. So one, two, three, uh, four... Four people there, I think. Um, not sure who else is going. That might be it, but I'm not sure. No, oh, such an awesome lineup, <laughs> as always. Yeah, really mm -hmm. stellar artists and really great people. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next question is by Bianca. Um, does school doesn't provide any advanced class in perspective or? Sh foreshortening and hard angles in general in general for narratives um hmm not that i can really think of mm -hmm. like hardcore perspective and stuff we did have one that w w was just amazing um scott robertson mm -hmm. he's like human maya his perspective is just insane um yeah, he's doing other things now. He's like, he's doing, he told me a little bit. It's like literally like he's trying to save the world or something <laughs> like that. Uh, wow. Yeah, so best of luck to my buddy Scott Robertson. Mm -hmm. Amazing artist, amazing person. His books are really good too. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, what is it called? Learn to Draw Learn or to something? Draw. How to Draw or? Yeah. Yeah. That one's hardcore with uh -huh. all that perspective stuff. Highly recommended. Mm -hmm. Design Studio Press. Okay, so the next question is by Eleanor. Um, what helps you relax in times of stress such as deadlines and busy periods? Ah, uh, yes. Um, the meditation stuff, the, the exercising stuff, and, and the belief that if you're putting in time, you're putting in the effort and you're using your logic right logic as in if I keep doing this will this bring me to where I want to go in life if you're doing all three of those then that's everything that you could possibly do mm -hmm. so you're succeeding you're succeeding in the long run right it doesn't really matter if that film does amazing or that project does really amazing you know, you're, you're doing everything that you can. Mm -hmm. And as long as you keep doing that, you're going to have a great career and you're going to have a successful life. Mm -hmm. So don't sweat the little stuff. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the next question is by Anik. Um, is it worth trying... Is it worthy trying from a third world country just from internet? Of course. I mean, no school at all. Of at course. All. You know what? There's so many artists that I can name that hit the highest levels of their industry with no traditional schooling. Mm -hmm. uh, Luis Gonzalez, for example, never went to university or college. Uh, if you look at my Twitter, 
John Hoffman, who's a Pixar story artist, literally said that Luis Gonzalez is the best story artist draftsman that Mm -hmm. they have at Pixar. And Louis, he worked on every animated Brad Bird film that has been made uh, since Iron Giant. So Ratatouille, Iron Giant, uh, The Incredibles. He's worked on all of them, you know. Mm. Steven Silver never had uh, the traditional education as well. Mm-hmm. And for every disadvantage that you feel like you have, there is an advantage there somewhere. We live in Toronto, Canada. It's not like in the Arctic or anything, but a lot of the jobs that we want as uh, conceptual artists or illustrators, the really, really good jobs, uh, they aren't usually in Toronto, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we need to attract those kind of jobs abroad as well. And your advantage, how I see it, is that you work in a, you live in a third world country. So your dollar will stretch a lot further, mm-hmm. you know? So you don't have to have uh, nonstop huge projects. You can have one huge project and live a comfortable life a lot longer than others while you work on your portfolio, work on your exposure and all that stuff to get another big project, Mm -hmm. you know, without having to be kind of cornered into taking projects that you don't want so that you can pay the bills. Mm -hmm. That's how I kind of see it. Mm. Okay. Um, So the next question is by Seaman Haman. Uh, Hey, Bobby, would you say it's important to try to gain exposure locally or should I just get to uh, get it online such as Facebook and Instagram? Any suggestions for forums or online communities? Okay, so there's two questions there. Locally or on the internet, best thing is both. Unless you don't really care to, you know, get that much exposure from where you live, like perhaps it's a city or town that doesn't really have any kind of art community at all Mm -hmm. then i guess it wouldn't be as important right depends on where you put your importance then the whole entire thing about posting on forums and stuff like that it's important to create conversations you know on forums or instagram uh, especially when you're starting off comment back to the people that comment on your stuff Mm. right comment on other people's stuff don't make it just one word things that say awesome or whatever even though nowadays nowadays a lot of times i do that you know i'll just leave leave like i love it and because i have no time yeah but at the same time when you're a person that has a lot of followers you know when you post anything when you give any kind of comment it means more Mm -hmm. now i'm not thinking like hugely about my own stuff i'm just saying like in general that's how it is right when you get uh, a comment from you know the best of the best glenn keen gives you a comment even though glenn keen would probably never give anybody comments because he (laughs) has better things to do with his time Um, (laughs) you would be like holy smokes and you might just even comment about that person's comment or just saying, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so the next question is by KJP. Um, what do you use to record your screen and edit your videos? And do you, use only, uh, do you only use your phone to record your vlog or do you use a camera? Right. So vlog, action, it's, you know, I don't have time to do a giant setup or stuff like that because the vlog is such a small part of the daily things I have to do so it's camera action it's or it's phone action I just put my phone up and I just start recording Mm. and you know quick and dirty and get it out there it's better than not doing it at all because that's the alternative Uh, I don't have time to do all this other stuff yeah um what's the other part to that question i forget um do you oh use recording and editing yes. right so recording and editing uh camtasia 
I use Camtasia to record if it's screen capture, uh, you know, off my computer. And then to edit Camtasia or After Effects generally, that's what I'll use to edit. Mm. Yeah, I like that program. It's super friendly. <laughs> it's easy. User friendly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, should we take a couple more questions? Okay, yeah, let's take a. Let's take one last question. One last question? Okay. Um, by Nacho. Uh, as an art student, I feel like I'm improving my drawing skills, but that's just a tool I use to create things out of my head. Any advice on getting better at creating ideas in general? I mean, do you do, en do, you do any specific exercise, like train your shapes, line actions, but for ideas before you externalize them? Well, with ideas, you kind of like every type of skill can play into um, creating ideas from, you know, working on your line, line quality to your structure, to your lighting, to your everything, you know. But I think one thing that is important if you want to develop ideas and make really cool intellectual properties and stories to always have that on your mind you know mm -hmm. it, even if it's in the back of your mind and then you have a little sketchbook with you that you can jot down your ideas or draw them down um, when I went to CTN I met this guy that had this thing called sketch wallet it's really cool mm -hmm. It's a wallet with the that that is meant for artists. It has an actual sketchbook inside the wallet. Oh, cool! Yeah, that you can just pull out, and then when you pull out your sketchbook, you also have your credit cards and stuff. So it is, I guess, could be kind of weird if you're sketching and you got all your credit cards and your money out at the same time, <laughs> especially in a foreign country or something. <laughs> but uh, I thought that was a really neat idea. Yeah. I haven't used it that much myself yet mm -hmm. but i i got one so oh, also perhaps i'll use that as my idea journal yeah but you know start your actual idea journal mm -hmm. and by the way somebody just said sabrina or uh, sabina just said actually glenn keen commented on an artist's work it's such a big deal <laughs> that you're commenting about a comment that somebody else gave to somebody else you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like when you're at certain levels, then you don't have to write a big comment. Mm -hmm. You can just give them a happy face and they'll be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, Glenn Keane oh. gave me a happy face. It's like a legend. Yeah. Okay, everybody. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. That's all the time we got today. The hour goes by super quick. Thank you very much, everybody. Have an awesome weekend. Bye, guys. Want more to listen to while you draw and paint? Remember to visit Schoolism.com. You'll find art courses, live workshops, and over 100 free video interviews with many of the top artists in the art industry. Where do professionals go to keep learning? Schoolism.com.